Hey everybody, good evening and welcome back to the Crazy For You channel. I am so happy to have you here. Tonight I am very excited. It seems like I'm always excited to have you here. I guess I am, it's pretty fun. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to sharing with you um, a new yarn from the beautiful Rowan line. You know I love Rowan, I'm just all about it. And this particular yarn is called Rowan Cotton Wool. And it's a beautiful new blend of 40% wool and 60% cotton, but not just any of that. It's organic cotton and organic merino. So it's really, really lovely. And I can't wait to share it with you. Hi, Rita. Nice to have you here. So, um, so let's just talk about what it looks like. I want to show you. So this is the yarn. It's really, really pretty. I wanna show you close up later on, but right now I just wanted to talk about it in terms of the way it feels. So it has a beautiful, soft, silky kind of hand. Um, you know, we talked last time about shiny versus matte fibers. This is really neither shiny nor matte. I would call this lustrous. Do you know what I mean? So it has a beautiful, um, beautiful silky feel. It's so, so soft, but the, the surface is a little bit brushed. So it has just the tiniest bit of a little haze on it. So really soft. So it's not reflective in the shiny way, but um, the, the wool is such a high quality that I think it really does give it a tiny bit of reflectiveness, hence that, that term um, luminous that I love for it. So it's, it's really beautiful. Um, the construction is, um, it's a modern construction, which is what David McLeod had called it, but specifically it's a chainette construction. So um, when you look at it, it looks very, very round, which gives it a very nice stitch definition. But when you, when you pull it apart, you can actually see the construction. So um, I want to show that to you. So let me show you real quick what that looks like. Let me bring this, this up. Hi, Terry. Hi, Tara. Yes, we all love soft yarns. Who doesn't love soft yarns? I mean, they're gorgeous, right? Uh, hi, Jal. Nice to see you. Oh, I'm so glad you guys could join me tonight. It's always fun to have you, like, you know, because I'm talking to you. It's so nice. All right. So let me show you this. Hi, Nishaya. Here's a question Nishaya had. So if I wanted to make a summer top, this would be good for that. Or is there something lighter weight or more breathable? Okay. So that's a really, really good question. Um, when a yarn is brushed in this way with a slight halo, it has an effect of feeling a little cozier, I think. So, you know, there's the term I use for yarns that are not brushed. It's very crisp. Do you know what I'm saying? So the yarn has, um, I don't know how else to explain it, a very crispness, a very smooth, um, not at all, not even a little bit fuzziness. Okay, so there's no fuzziness to a crisp yarn. Think hand knit cotton um, or cotton glacé. So cotton glacé in the extreme is not fuzzy. It's extremely crisp. Those very highly mercerized yarns that are very shiny and very re reflective, um, I think they tend to feel very cool against your body. Um, whereas this yarn, while I think it would make a great summer top, it's not going to give you that same kind of very, very cool, um, crisp feel. Does that make sense? All right, let's see, Meredith. Um, okay, so um, Meredith came in a little bit. This is a new yarn. It's Rowan Cotton Wool. Okay, it is 60% um, organic cotton and 60% organic merino. So definitely a luxury fiber. Really, really beautiful. You know, you look at it on the shelf and you're like, oh, that's pretty. And you pick it up and you go, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. And then when you knit up a swatch, you're like, oh. Yeah, I had that experience today with Mary. I knit it up and I showed it to her and she said, Oh, yeah. You know that. That's that's yarn store speak. We know exactly what that means. So lots of fun. 
Um, okay, so where was I? Oh, I wanted to show it to you kind of close up. So let me get this, um, let me get this um, up here for you. Okay, so here are my swatches. I'll show you that in a minute. So here's the yarn up close. You can see that it has just a tiniest bit of, of fuzz to it. Can you see that? And when you pull it apart, so I'm going to pull this apart a little bit. See, when you deconstruct it, you can see rather than being plied, it's that chainette construction. But it's a long chainette. And do you see how it's just a tiny, tiny bit fuzzy? It's not something that you would ever notice unless you are, you know, this close to it. Whoops. So it's not something you'd notice unless you're this close to it. You see that? Let me get this better. All right. So I would definitely, I mean, I run, kind of, see, and when you close it up, I mean, it's really smooth. And do you see how round it is? It's a really nice round fiber, which is beautiful because it gives you really great stitch definition. That roundness means you get that perfectly, um, what do you call it? Perfectly balanced V in your knit stitch. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, super round and super soft. So um, long chainette construction, lightly brushed. So the feel of it is cozy rather than crisp. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Gwen. Um, so if you tend to run hot, it may not be the right um, yarn for you. Remember that this is 40% wool. So for me, a yarn that's a that equal a blend of cotton and wool is definitely going to have some of its wool parentage in there. So if, you know, like you said, if you run hot, it's probably not the yarn for you to wear in August, but I see it as a beautiful transitional fabric or um, for people like me that are, you know, always kind of cold. <laughs> so, um, so, that's what I would say. I don't think this is um, a perfect yarn for the dead of summer in Southern Maryland or anywhere south of south of Southern Maryland because it's just going to be too warm. But beautiful for the fall, beautiful for the spring. Honestly, I, I could totally see myself wearing this. I'll call it a three-season fiber. How about that? I would totally wear it in the winter. Um, it's it's really beautiful for that. So beautiful colors. Let me show you the colors. So really pretty colors. Um, and I will also tell you that, that this yarn is not new this season. This yarn came out a season ago and it was part of a, a line for a, um, a, a book called Bloom. And it was um, for baby things, but I didn't, I couldn't buy into it for baby things because it's not a machine wash tumble dry. And I feel like um, a baby things need to be pretty easy care because most moms, new moms, don't have the time to be, you know, worrying about hand washing things. The label says hand wash. I'm not sure that you actually need to hand wash it. I think I'm going to give it a spin. I'm going to give both of my swatches a spin, cold water, in the machine delicate cycle in a bag and then lay them flat to dry and see how it goes and i will let you know but um for grown-up garments yeah absolutely and i will tell you that kim hargreaves has a new book out called drift and she has two beautiful garments designed in this which just make me swoon which is why i said okay i'm gonna bring this yarn in because i wanted to have it but i didn't want to market it for babies does that make sense <laughs> so um, yes, let's see. Oh, Valerie's from London. Hey, Valerie. Have you ever been to the Rowan, um, the Rowan flagship over there in Yorkshire? I would love to hear about that sometime. Okay. What else did I want to show you? Um, 
So the construction of that, you know, that modern construction with the chainette, it gives the yarn a, a little more elasticity than it might normally have, but it also gives a good yardage. So um, it's got 142 yards per 50 grams. And um, the ball band says that it's a DK. But remember that terms like DK can be kind of subjective, um, especially when you're dealing with a British company. So they use terms like Aaron um, and worsted to mean things that are, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, and they use DK to mean yarns that knit at 20, 21, 22 range. So for me, I usually think of DK as something that knits at 22, but the ball band says 20 stitches over four inches. So, and, and they recommend a size six needle. So um, knowing that maybe I'm, that it is a little elastic, I went ahead with a seven because I know for me that I'm gonna need a size seven needle to get 20 stitches over four inches. So I want to share my swatches with you. Okay, Valerie says, I hope that Rowan brings out four ply. They used to have wool cotton. Ah, uh, yeah, this is a very different yarn than wool cotton, Valerie. I did carry wool cotton and it is absolutely beautiful, but it's definitely applied yarn and it has a completely different feel, crisper than this, okay? This is definitely more soft and certainly a heavier gauge. So let's look at the two swatches that I did. All right, so this is the swatch that I did on the size seven needles. Let me see if maybe this is better. I think this is better. All right. Oh, you're making the horizontal cable sweater from Kim Hargreaves. Oh, that's so nice. So we have, um, we actually have the trunk show, the Kim Hargreaves trunk show from um, the Drift book. It's her, her latest book. I'm so excited. We have it in the shop and I'm going to preview that tomorrow at our retreat. So super excited, but we will have it for a good bit of time. So if you're local and you haven't had a chance, if you're not at the retreat and you wanna see it, I'll have it in the shop. And I'll also be featuring it at, on the podcast next week. So look for that because it's gonna be amazing. Okay, so here is the swatch that I did on sevens. Again, it doesn't matter what size needle you use. The point is the gauge. And the gauge here is um, 19 and a half, so really close to 20. I probably could have gotten 20 if I had gone to um, a six. But do you see how beautiful and even and round those stitches are? They're just lovely. It's so soft. The fabric is just gorgeous. And you see what I mean about its luster? It's not shiny, it's not matte, but it is lustrous and, oh my goodness, to die for soft. So there it is at its native gauge um, of mm, around 20 stitches. And you see what a plushy, it makes a really nice plushy fabric, really pretty. I did not tell you the retreat surprise, Meredith. I have lots and lots of retreat surprises. That's just one of them. So it is a little bit of a spoiler, but that's not the one. <laughs> oh my goodness, aren't you sneaky? Okay, so um, here's another one that I did on the next size up. So I did this one on a US eight. And you can see that it's a little looser, obviously, but still a, definitely a, you know, a wearable fabric, um, more open, not quite as even. You know, when you knit a little more tightly, the stitches tend to be a little more even, but neither of these has been blocked. So that's a difference to, to note. But look at that stitch definition, really, really good stitch definition. I've got my little, um, my pearl ridge indicating my needle size and you know, my garter stitch border. So you can see that if this would show up cables really, really well. Um, and there is a sideways cable project in the book. So very beautiful. And I'll show that to you. But 
all in all, I will tell you that it is a lovely, lovely yarn to knit. Um, I was knitting with it and I, I just want to, this is not a needle review, but I did want to share with you these um, Rowan needles that I used. I had not used them before and I, I had them and I thought, oh, well, let's try them. Really lovely. I'll do a review on these needles later on because honestly, I had not expected to love them as much as I do. I'm going to show you them close up real quick. And like I said, this will be, um, we'll do a needle review, but, but look at them. Look at this tip. I mean, beautiful, beautiful, sharp tip, but not too sharp. Sharp, but not too sharp. Very silky smooth, but not slippery. So, you know, kind of just like the yarn, you know, exactly right. You know, not too slick, not, not too pointy. It's just right. Like the yarn is not too matte, not too, um, not too shiny. It's just right. Okay, so I want to show you the um, garments that, uh, just a couple of the garments that are designed for this particular yarn. So let me share my screen here. Okay, so I love this one. This is my favorite, probably. This is called Goodness, and I think this is just gorgeous. This is a long, obviously a long cardigan, heavily cabled um, with sort of a flat cable. This one kind of a horseshoe cable. So it's definitely cabled, but it's not all bunchy. So you see that it's not a highly structured garment. Um, isn't that pretty? I just love that. So easy fitting. And that is in this gray color, tiny. So I think that's really beautiful. So Valerie told us here, let's see, haven't been to the flagship store. It used to be in Oxford Street. Now it's moved to Osprey House. Cool. I love Great Britain. It's just beautiful. Okay. And another one that I like is um, this one called Ivy. See what I mean about it just being really cozy? I think this is a very modern looking sweater and just so, so pretty. This is in um, the color Mushy. Not a ton of elasticity. So notice that there isn't um, a trim on this. It's worked in stockinette. Um, with no garter or ribbing at the cuff. And it doesn't seem to be rolling. So I think that kind of indicates maybe a tiny bit of a roll there, but indicates that it's not um, overly elastic. It's not going to pull up. But doesn't that look just so pretty and perfect for springtime or any other sort of transitional time? And to show you... Diane said she had done, um, was doing gratitude. So let me bring that up and I'll show you. Okay, gratitude, I guess was, this is why I didn't bring it up. It was written for hand knit cotton, but absolutely interchangeable in terms of gauge. Isn't this pretty? This would be just lovely in the cotton wool. Wow, my goodness. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Beautiful cables, beautiful stitch definition. Oh, I think that's lovely. Oh, you're going to love the feel of that. Remember how last season we talked about um, how Kim uses this garter ridge to delineate um, the cuff from the body? I think that's such a nice, um, nice little detail that she does. All of her stuff is so pretty and well done. All right. The second one, you like that one with the kind of the funnel neck. So this is gratitude. That one is, I can't remember. Anyway, well, here's the yarn. I also wanted to show you, for those of you who are top down in the round Heidi Kermeyer um, fans, she has one called Ship Shape, which is very pretty. And she 
has used a variety of yarns, but one of the yarns that she recommends is the Rowan cotton wool. And that would be very pretty. And it does come in a nice navy. I would have to say that this one is my favorite. Shocking, I know, right? <laughs> but that would be really fun. So again, the yarn is really beautiful, very soft. Um, a beautiful three season yarn. If you live in England or in the north or someplace where summers are not muggy and hot and sticky, I think you could definitely wear this four seasons. It would be it would be beautiful for like New England in the evening on the beach. I can definitely see that. Um, but just for for our area here in in Maryland in the mid Atlantic, I think it would probably be too hot for the um, for summer. So that is my take on it. So did anybody want to see the colors kind of close up? Should I show? I think I will. All right. So I don't, I didn't bring all of the colors with me because as you can see, there is a navy, but let me, let me bring this up and show you. Here we go. Okay, so this is the gray. They call this nap time. And you'll notice that all of the names are kind of, um, you know, baby names. So nap time and mushy and giggle and stuff because that's what the yarn was designed for. But again, I think it's not that it's too nice to be used on babies because I think babies deserve nice stuff, but it might require a little more handling and a little more care than a new mom white might want to um to put into it i think i will use this one yes she included in the book for this yarn oh nice okay so this is nap time which is a beautiful steel gray as you can tell really pretty and this one is called mushy <laughs> Oops. So mushy is just a really pretty taupe. I think that's really nice and really wearable. Night, a really nice um, neutral. Dove gray or, or mousy brown or whatever. Very pretty. This one is tiny, which I think is very pretty. You see the texture, it's just so, well, it doesn't really have a texture. It's super smooth. So I just keep petting it. Oh my gosh, it's so pettable. Wow, it's like it's like almost like having a little kitten. Okay, and this is a beautiful little um, pale blue. Not sure this is coming out quite the way I want in the image here. There you go, blue. So very much a, a baby boy, baby blue, you know, baby blue. I know that colors don't have gender and I know that we go gender neutral and all that stuff, but everybody knows what I mean when I say baby blue, right? Um, and then here is, um, oh, and this baby blue one is called Cuddle, isn't that cute? And this pink one is called Dolly. Yeah, this is this is just pretty much perfect in my opinion. Practically perfect in every way, just like Mary Poppins. Very pretty. Um, millennial pink, if you will. Now here's one, it's called, uh, what do we call this? Moon. So this is kind of a sailor blue. Very pretty. I like that a lot. So that's really nice. And that would be really nice with this cream color if you wanted to do a stripe. So I like that. I mean, I like them all. They're all really beautiful. Here's the cream that, that I used um, for the swatches. Um, this is a pretty kind of, um, it's pinker than coral. It's sort of a rose color. It's warm and bright, but it's not as orange as a coral. It's, um, I don't know, strawberry? What do they call this? Hmm, I can't read it. I can't remember what that one's called. Maybe someone from Rowan is on and they will tell me. 
Um, I can't remember, but it uh, might be Piglet. Yeah, I think that might be Piglet. Yeah, beautiful. So is the milky yellowish? That is a really good question. I don't think so. Um, it's definitely winter white. It's not white, white. Um, you know, in order to get a white, white, you have to bleach it, you know, a wool, not a cotton so much, but a wool. So um, I think when you're dealing with organic fibers, there's a hesitancy to make a very, very white, white, so that you don't have to put those harsh bleaching chemicals on the yarn. So most of your whites are going to be a little bit more creamy than they are white, white. So, um, Christy loves it. Yes, that moon is beautiful. It's very you. Um, uh, I, I'm glad you like it, Diane. Ugh. And I, I want to see the dolly because, because pink, right? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so there's the white. Did I answer your question about whether this was yellowy or not? Um, I don't think it is. It's... It's a perfect ivory, you know, winter, a winter white, <laughs> my other favorite color. And then this one is called, um, I think this one is called Giggle. It's kind of a green. They're all showing up gray in my camera. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So you can see that it's kind of a, um, almost a celadon. Very, very pretty. But as a palette, I think it's a, it's a beautiful palette. I think you could take any of these and you know work them together. It's a cohesive a cohesive palette, and I do love these two sort of drab shades because you really need them to you know to balance. So like if you had this this blue, that would be a really pretty combination, and the blue would just pop against it. Same thing with this, you know, with this one. I think that would be really a nice, nice palette. And then you could do this. So I don't know if any of you are um, stripe girls, if you like stripes, but it would, it would lend itself to a very pretty striped garment. So I'm excited about it. I can't wait to cast on something with the dolly. Um, I've already swatched, <laughs> so maybe I'll make that, um, can't decide if I'm going to make the cardigan or the pullover. I think I might make the pullover because I just am finishing the moss cardigan, which is a huge, huge open cardigan. It's very beautiful. But um, anyway, any questions, any thoughts? Um, I would be happy to answer them for you. So let's see. So I, like I said, I will be doing the um, review of uh, Kim Hargreaves new book and I'll have all the garments and I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that in the shop or whether I'll do that from here, but I'll show you all of them. And I'm so excited because they are just beautiful. She's one of my favorite, favorite designers and her stuff is just absolutely lovely. Um, but I encourage you to, to come by, get a, get a skein of it, swatch it, and see what you think. If you want to come by the shop, I will have this sample skein on the needles, and you can knit with it just a little bit and see what you think and see the swatches. I'm also, like I said, I'm going to knit up another swatch and wash it so that we see what exactly happens when you um, wash it. I may even give it a tumble in the dryer just to see, because a lot of times the ball band will just air on the very conservative side because a, wa a trip in the washer and the dryer could damage the, the surface or it could full on felt the thing. So we're just gonna find out so that we know. Um, and if I find that it can go through the washing machine without felting, but maybe a little bit of degradation in the, the texture or the stitch definition, which is typically what happens when you um, machine wash an organic cotton, it loses its, um, its crispness. And if that's all that happens, I'm going to say it's probably okay for the baby stuff because it will just melt in. But if it does have felting, then, you know, but it's, it's good to know, which is why we swatch and why we try it, you know? So 
I'll do it so you don't have to. <laughs> All right, let's see. Love Stripes. Yes, she has some really cute stuff and I can't wait to share it with you. So, all right. Well, it's been wonderful to be with you guys tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to sharing more cotton wool with you and more Kim Hargreaves. Good night, everybody.